Hi viewers, it's Ket, and welcome to my comprehensive Obimaler PvP guide. Just for the record, this is going to be a rather long video, as I will be discussing everything you should know regarding the current state of PvP, gear setups, how to PK if you are a beginner to Obimaulers, and what you could improve on if you consider yourself an expert. I've decided to create a guide like this simply to help the Obimaler community explore viable approaches to PKing on an Obimaler account. And as the state of PvP is changing with the removal of Bounty Hunter and what's left of the PvP worlds, I figured this was an appropriate time to disclose my personal tips and tricks so that you are more equipped in taking on your opponents in PvP situations. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started by introducing you to the current state of PvP. Uh, guys? Hello? Where is everybody? This is supposed to be PvP! Right. What you're seeing is correct. This is the state of Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter got replaced with Target Worlds, and nobody plays on Target Worlds. So what do we do now? Where do we belong as Obby Maulers? <laughs> well, I'll leave you to answer that question. So while we wait for more fixes to the PvP situation, as Jagex quote-unquote promised us, we have to rely on PvP worlds. Now my viewers, PvP worlds are these magical places where anyone can attack you that are 15 combat levels higher or lower than you. That's right. For example, I am 63 combat and a level 78 maxed 60 attack peer with 99 strength, ranged, and magic can attack me. Tell me that's fair. When Bounty World still existed, I even thought I was outmatched to someone who was 4 combat levels above me. So yeah, a 15 combat level disparity is just pure disgusting. So here, you can find rushers freezing and teleblocking you and running in for the classic spec and telly, but you can also find those sweaty wannabe PKers that will bully you consistently and constantly attack you that are 10 plus combat levels higher than you are. I'm just telling you the flat, cold, hard truth. But it is still very possible to find honest fights amongst people that are your combat level. And this is what we patiently hope for as obbies, as we do crave a fair fight. So with all that being said about the current PvP situation, let's start out on my second topic, our gear setup. Of course, I am a one defense obby mauler, so these suggestions I'm about to give you are merely based on the gear my build has access to. If you have a build with higher attack or defense, please use the proper accommodations for the gear slash inventory setups that I'm about to show you. Now let's begin. These equipped slots all factor into maximizing strength bonus. These slots should never be replaced with any other alternative unless you are a tank that has access to adamant gloves. I personally PK Scald to find fights easier, so I do not use spiked manacles or the Berserker Ring. Instead, I use a Ring of Recoil and any boots of my choice, as no other items in these slots factor into higher hits. All the unoccupied equipment slots shown here do not make a difference in maximizing your strength, so typically they are up to the PKer's discretion when choosing your gear loadout. Keep in mind, when PKing on a low defense build, Defensive armor hardly factors into your opponent's chances of hitting you, especially when fighting peers with a high range level or a very accurate Granite Mauler account. Now that we've covered the basic equipment that maximizes strength bonus, I'd like to share with you my personal recommendations for the other slots not previously mentioned. So this is the standard Obby Mauler gear setup, with items that are generally easy to obtain, including items such as the Bearhead and Varrock Body 1 that provide a great deal of defensive bonuses. But like I said before, defense bonuses are not that big of a deal on a 1 defense account, but there are people in the game that swear by maximizing defensive capabilities, so if you are one of these people, this is a great starting gear setup for you to achieve. I'd also like to present other ideas for gear that nobody seems to talk about, such as cost-effective alternatives, new fashionscape ideas, and bait gear that you can use to attract newbie players to think that you are risking hella bank. 
Here's an example of a cost-effective gear setup that looks pretty cool, that features holiday, random event, and other non-tradable items so that when you die, you can easily go retrieve all these items from your gravestone or Diango and Draenor. And for this example of a fashionscape setup, by flexing your most coveted outfit options, surely when you bop your opponent with a 40 on their head, your opponent knows exactly who is the alpha on their trip back to Lumbridge. And here are some really ideal bait gear options that are cheap and look like you are risking big hella bank. These are just to name a few and I'm sure there are loads more out there that you can find. By combining one or more of these categories, you should be well on your way to choosing which outfits work best for you. And hopefully I've presented plenty of options. Moving on from an Obby Mahler's worn equipment, I'm going to be discussing one of the most important factors when it comes to BKing, which is the gear you choose to bring with you to secure a kill. Beginners, intermediate players, and even experts might not even recognize some of these items and their uses, so I'm going to be breaking down all the details, including the specific reasonings as to why I choose to bring these items and which order I place them in my inventory. Now, this is personally what I choose to bring to PK, and I'm not saying that this is entirely correct. So you might have a few personal preferences, and please, use whatever is comfortable to you. But, hopefully you will try out one or more of these ideas that I share with you. Also, for a little bit of a disclaimer, you may notice that I do not bring a ranged weapon. Shocker. And my personal choice is to purely melee PK on this account due to being so limited in the amount of ranged XP obbies can attain. Despite what you see or often hear, melee PKing is very strong and it opens up different options compared to range PKing. Range PKing merely focuses on stacking or combining multiple hits to your opponent at a time and that's it, while melee PKing for obbies focuses more on disorienting the opponent by movement, learning how to fake switch, wielding strange weapons to cause distractions, and constantly being unpredictable to keep your opponents on their toes. So in this video, I will be mainly focusing on what to bring for melee PKing only. Obviously, there are a few substitutions like bringing a range potion and range weapons for uh, the range aspect of PKing, but for the purposes of this video, I will primarily be focusing on melee PKing. Alrighty guys, so let's dive right on into this inventory setup we see. Uh, so at first glance, you should notice that I have all of my equipable gear and weapons right up at the top, except for my Slayer staff, but that's for a good reason. So um, the reason I prefer to have all my weapons and gear up at the top is because whenever I switch to um, anything with an offhand, uh, my shield is right there. It's placed up at the first vacant slot of your inventory, which is quite nice. Um, I do see that people do prefer having their equipment all the way down here, and that's close to the spec bar and for certain prayers and venge and all that. But uh, this build doesn't actually need that, and if you're used to doing that, that's fine. But um, I prefer up at the top because it's easier to manage where my shield is. Um, so I just know exactly where it's going to go every single time. I have my potions here preoccupying all of these spaces so it goes right around to this particular area and I'm satisfied with that. I don't have to jumble around and try to know exactly where it's going to be. Um, so let's move on here. Um, you'll see that I have the v-neck which is great because um, it's great to switch in from a Emulate of Glory because the Emulate of Glory gives so much accuracy bonuses, it's insane. Um, so let's see right here with the Slayer Staff and with the Bone Dagger, these are typically the two weapons that are going to benefit the most from the Emulate of Glory, oh and as well as the RPG. So the RPG actually has uh, zero stats, um, which is, it's decent, but it is the fastest weapon available for Obby Maulers to use in terms of the tick cycle um, so this is typically my main go-to weapon for damage per second and my main uh, combo weapon uh, that goes right on into the obby mall at those uh, thin hp marks where my opponent is right around there uh, the hp is right around the max hit of my obby mall that is generally the sweet spot for obbies that's where you should be looking for the rpg to mall combo for the finisher um, but so the reason why we always need a necklace to switch in is because the Berserker necklace gives negative crush bonuses. So you'll see this. 
and it also gives negative defensive stats too, but which is not as important, but it, it does contribute a factor. I mean, negative 20 uh, is, is quite, you know, it's it's enough to be able to use the Emilio Glory for. Um, but that accuracy bonus is what we're really looking to maximize, especially with using a weapon with no stats. We need as much as we can possibly get to hit over one defense and whatever kind of uh, minimum defense gear our opponent is wearing. Um, so that's typically what the usage for that is. Um, uh, let's see here. You'll notice that I have a certain amount of fun weapons, but disregard these. I'm going to go ahead and cover these in a whole other video segment because I have so much to say about fun weapons. I'm just giving you a broad example of what I choose to use in a PvP scenario. So we're going to go ahead and just disregard these. Moving on, um, you'll see that I have anglerfish. These are good for boosting up to the, uh, over your HP mark. So your base HP, um, the anglerfish allows you a certain percentage of that um, to be boosted above your base HP, which is nice to begin a fight with. Um, if you're already anglered up, uh, it prevents a lot of, you know, rushing type strategies. It prevents, you know, your opponent from doing so much damage to you. Um, it just, anything helps, really. Uh, it's nice to just maximize the amount of HP that you can have on your character. So let's go ahead right back in with it. We have the Divine Super Combat Potion, which is actually a newer item to the game. For those of you that are just returning or are not familiar with this item, what it does is it's just like a Super Combat Potion, which gives a boost to your attack, strength, and defense. Um, but with the Divine variant of this, it actually allows you to take 10 HP, which is non-recurrable, and it gives you these boosts, and these boosts are stagnant, so they're basically like an overload. Uh, not as powerful, but it's basically an overload version of the Super Combat Potion, and you'll see here if you have the uh, the timers on on your rune light, it'll actually show uh, the five minutes, and it'll display that, which is quite nice. I do enjoy that um, and the reason for the two anglers going back to that is because whenever we take damage from that uh, we heal up to um, a certain amount but that's still not the full amount that we can get uh, and really achieve so I like to enter a fight with the full amount of um, being angled up so it takes two anglerfish to use with the divine super combat I love these things because uh, my attack does not dwindle down in the fight, um, my strength does not dwindle down, so I'm always going to be hitting that 45 max. Um, it'll never drip down to where I'm hitting 44s or 43s. I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about repotting in the middle of a fight. So that's pretty cool. Um, obviously, I have prayer potions. Now, I'm bringing two because I see a lot of smiters in my uh, combat level, and if you see a lot of smites, definitely bring two i don't think it's quite necessary to bring three but i mean sometimes comes up in the longevity of the fight but i like to bring two just to be safe two full ones um and the reason why i have a i'm always using a two dose super divine combat potion because um it always stays right there i don't i have uh, crush files on so um maybe that's not the right way to go but crush files basically just um removes the vial uh, and, and breaks them as soon as you use a particular potion. And you can toggle that in Barbarian Village after completing the bar crawl. Um, so I really like just to have that space there because like I said, with the shield, I can always just manipulate. Uh, I know exactly where that shield is gonna go whenever I switch to something with, um, with an offhand weapon. So uh, moving on, I have Guthix Rests. Now these bad boys, are the most overpowered thing on an obby mauler um, we need these badly what these do if you're unfamiliar with these they heal five hp per uh, dose of it so there's four dosage so it's basically equivalent to a shark in that inventory slot um, so it heals five and you'll notice here that it does put your character into the eating animation which is cool um, it's just like a potion. It acts as a Sarah brew or, a, or another type of potion where it does not intervene with the attack or with the attack animations or with the attack cycle necessarily. Uh, so whenever you're fighting your opponent and you're doing damage and you click one of these bad boys 
or, or a pot, um, you will not interrupt your attack speed. So you'll be able to actually heal while applying pressure to your opponent, which is actually quite awesome. So you can be smacking them with the Abimal all day and be healing as long as you have sips of these. Um, just know that whenever you do take a sip of this, you cannot hit the food, see, see that? So you can't do that, you have to go in reverse. So these actually act as um, subo, pseudo combo foods where you can manta ray and then hit the guthix rest uh, just similar to taking a, a, a dose of prayer pod um, you can do both of those in the same tick cycle and they'll register in the same game tick which is awesome so instead of hit, uh, healing a 21 like the manta ray does uh, you'll be healing up to a 26 uh, so I typically use that if I'm either out of Karam ones or I just need that extra little bump to get uh, right back into applying pressure to my opponent. Um, so these are very useful. I bring two of them because I absolutely love these things. I, I use all the doses I can. Uh, these are just something that you just go to, you just wanna have. And if your opponent is not using them, it's just, it just creates such an advantage over your opponent if your opponent does not have access to these, which is great. Um, and then obviously the Manta Ray Seal 21 and your Karam ones are your standard combo food where you can, just like I displayed with the Gothic Rest, you can go boom boom and it'll register in the same uh, game, uh, game tick and you'll heal 21 and 18 um, off the Karam one. So that's uh, 39 if I can math correctly, which is quite nice. Whenever you're getting specced out, uh, that is typically the go-to and it's right next to my manta rays so i can just go boom boom i don't have to search my inventory <laughs> click here here or here here i don't i don't have to do that I, I go right next to where your manta ray is for those um and then you'll also notice i'm using a ring of recoil but one is in my inventory and one is on me um i do bring uh, a replacement and that is simply for um the longevity of fights nowadays if people are deciding to stay the entire fight uh, the second one does come up and these only do 40 damage before they bust so um, and that's also uh, another point to bring um, you want to make sure that before engaging into a fight you want to make sure that the one that is worn is uh, all the way up to full so you could do this by breaking the ring. You could do one in your inventory, you can do one on you, it doesn't matter. Uh, you break the ring and it resets that 40 damage and it'll uh, destroy the one in your inventory. Um, so that's quite cool. Um, and also, <laughs> the reason why I have my Slayer Staff all the way down here is because uh, whenever I engage in the fight, uh, the first thing that I do is the uh, Bone Dagger Special. So I see this actually done the wrong way most of the time i'm seeing a lot of opponents or a lot of people who use the bone dagger as obby maulers they'll they'll hit with you know the obby maul first or the slayer staff first and then they'll be like all right well i'm gonna bring out my bone dagger and i'm gonna do the special ability well the special ability only does a it, it, it guarantees a hit it guarantees the first hit if, if you are hitting the opponent and you did not previously deal damage to them um, you will guarantee a hit 95% of the time because you do have a small chance to roll a zero on that hit. So the reason why I have my Slayer Staff all the way down here is because I only use it for that first hit of the fight and it is um, it is a little bit costly, but I believe that that hit just adjusts the momentum of the fight in your favor to where you can guarantee that hit. Um, we're low attack as it is, so anything guaranteed is a good thing in my opinion. So. We'll find this man as a culprit here. So we'll go right into the spec and then switch right into the Slayer Staff and start beating them to town. And you'll notice that my Bone Dagger will populate down here. And whenever I decide to switch my weapons around, um, everything will be up here in a moment's glance. And I won't have to deal with the Bone Dagger being anywhere up here. Um, I only use it for that first hit. <laughs> mainly there's maybe an occasion where i'll notice my opponent hasn't been poisoned so i'll just bring it out for cheekiness but other than that it's only used as the first hit of the fight um, so it's very important and it's just down here out of the way don't have to worry about it um, and then our best weapon in the whole entire game is the house tabs 
believe it or not. Yep, these escape you from anything, any sort of situation that you feel uncomfortable in. Don't don't be ashamed to tab out. Everybody does it. Everybody spec tabs. It's it's really annoying, but hey, you have the same chance to do it too. Don't forget about these bad boys. These are crazy good. Um, and I only have my concave because I have it. And um, unfortunately, with the way PvP is going right now, I do get rushed quite a bit. Not too often, but when I do, I don't want to use my house tabs and have to keep you know bringing some out of the bank when I can just carry around this bad boy. Um, I just like it for ease of access and I can just get around with it. It's always in my inventory. I don't care what I'm doing. It's always in my inventory. Um, but for those who don't have it, don't worry about it. it house tab does just fine. Um, and then you'll also notice, hey cat, why do not you have any super anti-poisons or any sort of protection from anti-fire? And that's because I don't bring them with me necessarily. Um, I do have them in my bank and I'll show you. So what I do before I angler up and I do all these uh, and, I, and I do the Divine Super Combat Potion is I'll take one dose, that's all you need, one dose of each. And this can be done at the bank before you decide to even engage or even find a fight. Um, you can just get one of these bad boys out of the bank and go boom boom. And if you have timers on, you can see exactly when they will last for, and that provides protection from um, poison, any type of poison, not venom though, but poison, and uh, any kind of anti-fire if your opponent's using debolts, which is very, very common. Do this at the bank every 12 minutes, and you'll be good to go. There's no no need or reason why you need these in the inventory as like the full potions. Uh, that just takes up unnecessary space and it's easy to micromanage with these timers if these weren't uh, a thing I'd probably bring them with me um, every time, but that basically wraps up the, uh, the inventory um, Like I said, we'll be going over the fun weapons in another video But this is just to give you a, a sort of uh, debrief on why I choose the inventory setup the way I do and uh, what everything is used for. So hope you learned something about that and we'll move on to the next topic. Alrighty guys, so we've covered the current state of PVP, we've covered our gear setup, and we've also covered the recommended inventory setup. So now you're all familiarized with all those things. So now how do you actually PK? So what are some current things that you can focus on uh, before you engage in battle? Well, I'm going to be covering that in this segment. Uh, so for this segment, I'm going to be covering item switches, how to properly one tick your items, and also different movement options since we are, uh, generically speaking, pretty stationary as melee fighters. We fight up close to our opponent. Uh, using various movement techniques, we can be um, very sporadic in our um, in our patterns and it'll be very hard for your opponent to predict your next move in uh, with a combination of different item switches and your movement in the game so let's actually get started into the nitty-gritty um, what I mean by item switches and one ticking is if you're familiar with this game you'll know that this game operates on a game tick cycle so uh, the proper display of the game tick cycle is whenever I'm switching my necklace, for example, um, each time that you see the swap, that is a different game tick. Since I am spam clicking this, it is registering one swap per game tick. So you, you can only swap uh, one um, inventory slot at a time or one, one equipment gear. Now you can do multiples. You can do the, uh, the weaponry and the necklace. You can do um, offhand, uh, the weapon and the necklace at the same time. Um, so right there, that was a delayed uh, switch there. As you can see, I was way too slow on these. So these are all too slow. You can see that they're operating under different game ticks. They're registering on my character. So the goal is to do them whenever you're, uh, do them from one game cycle to the next. So for instance, you'll see that my staff and my shield are gonna be replaced, or sorry, my staff shield and my necklace are gonna be replaced with the Obby Maul and the Berserker necklace in one game tick. Boom, just gotta be quick. This is something that comes with practice and it's not necessarily something that you're gonna be gifted in at first try if you're uh, 
very unfamiliar with item switching, you haven't done a lot of PVM or PVP and no situation in the past has uh, led you in this situation, um, it's going to be very important to master just how to switch properly. Now that was a three-way switch that I just demonstrated. It was a perfect three-way switch that happened in one game tick where you saw I replaced the uh, Berserker necklace and the Obby Maul with my staff, my uh, other necklace, and my shield. So boom, boom. All right, so that was slow. And sometimes it does that, um, but you just gotta get familiar with the game cycle. So boom, boom. And I messed up again. See, we're all human. We all make mistakes. And that just goes to show that anyone, even myself, needs practice. And don't be ashamed. Everybody needs practice because we're all humans. We're not robots. Um, so typically, um, these are just things that you can just sit here and just click and get really good at them. Uh, skilling helps. Being in PvP situations helps. And just forcing yourself to be put in these situations where you need to be better at them also helps. And you could also do this whenever you're training at crabs or something. Just bring two different weapons, two different styles of amulets, and just sit there while you're bored to death if you're not AFKing, and just practice these simple drills of just switching into uh, RPG from the Slayer Staff or vice versa. Um, now I also like to trick my opponent out with uh, by wielding the um, the RPG and then going to the obby mall to scare them for a scare tactic and go right back into the RPG That is called a fakie when you for instance hit your opponent and then you switch very rapidly And then you switch back to the same weapon that you just used or a different one uh, For another hit so it displays boom. I hit with an RPG. I switch to the mall and then I hit back with the RPG. So I'll display that later on my opponent, uh, but let's go into reasons why you would wanna use the Slayer Staff, for instance, or the RPG, or even the Maul. Um, so you might be not be familiar with the perfect uh, or standard protocol for PVPing, and what I always recommend is that you use the Slayer Staff whenever your opponent is sitting at a uh, relatively high HP. The goal is for you to knock them down to a small window where your opponent is just a little bit higher than what your max hit is with your Obby Maul. So this is your finisher weapon, all right? Your Slayer Staff is a really good, um, a uh, really solid weapon all around. It doesn't have the quickest speed. It doesn't have the uh, the best um, hits, but it hits at a rate of every four game ticks, which is really awesome. It's the same speed as a scimitar, um, and it's very powerful. You'll see here that the crush bonus on this thing and the melee strength is, is pretty ag adequate for a weapon that you can wield with one attack. It's really, really strong. It is just a little bit stronger than an adamant scimitar for a one attack weapon which is which is just amazing and this is why i bring it almost every single time that i go pvp so between this weapon and the rpg and the obby maul um these are the main weapons now obviously the bone dagger but i didn't use i didn't bring this for this demonstration as i only use that for the first hit like i said in the last segment but you get the gist so uh, just to cover, the staff is used to bonk down your opponent and for really huge hits uh, that are very accurate and it's a very steady paced weapon. Now um, you want to use your RPG whenever you see your opponent uh, right above the Obby Maul max hit. So for instance, I'm 99 strength, so my max hit in standard PvP gear is a 45. So I'll probably be using the RPG. Uh, since it hits a max of about 18, I'll probably use this anywhere from my opponent being around 49 up into 60 HP, just to give me some leeway, because that means that I, I don't have to hit my absolute max, um, but then I can also just whittle them down to um, maybe a 47 or a 45 or lower because keep in mind, your recoil is gonna come in handy for you. Uh, meanwhile, you're doing DPS on your opponent, your recoil is really strong weapon, it's gonna recoil some of those damages, so you can risk it with the Obby Maul, you can, you can go in for the hit uh, right above your max hit, which mine's a 45, so I'll be bringing out my Obby Maul uh, right around the 47 mark, so that's what I'm kinda shooting for in my standard PvP gear. 
Um, all right, so we basically covered that. We've covered how to uh, one tick the Obby Mall. And let's go ahead and display some of these um, different strategies on a um, on a attack dummy, uh, such as my friend here. So uh, let's see how many times I can hit on his 99 defense too. It's gonna be funny. But anyway, so uh, the standard hits for the Slayer Staff, it's uh, once every fourth game tick. So you're gonna see it's a pretty steady weapon. Um, obviously I'm hitting zero because he's in uh, really good gear, but um, we're not gonna be focusing on the hits necessarily. We're gonna be focusing on the rate of which I'm hitting him. So it's pretty, pretty decent rate. Um, so you'll see all the hits that my animation of uh, attacking him is not undergoing are essentially dead uh, frames where you're, be able, you're able to act freely with your uh, movement and also um, along with our Guthix Rest. So you can see here, I brought Guthix Rest to not only occupy these inventory spaces, but also I wanna show you just as I was speaking with the inventory setup uh, uh, segment that um, drinking these do not interrupt the rate of which I'm attacking my opponent here. So I'm sipping them, I heal five HP each time, and sometimes uh, it depends on whenever you, you drink them. If you drink them after the hit animation, you'll, you'll go into the eating animation. But when you do it during a hitting hit animation, uh, you will not see that at all. So you can cover the, uh, the sip uh, during that whole entire eating animation. All right, so while you're not um, hitting your opponent, you obviously wanna be moving around. That's walking through your opponent that's walking to the side. And like I did, um, this actually forces your opponent to move their camera angle. So they might be trying to line up a nice time to go in for the G Mall. Well, if you're running around like a mad monkey, for instance, um, they're not gonna be able to hit that off uh, as uh, accurately as they want to. They're gonna have to move their camera angle. They're gonna have to move their own character because you're just gonna be going uh, you're just going to be coming at them from all different angles and directions. And uh, one thing to keep in mind whenever you're attacking uh, with with certain uh, movement mix-ups is you want to make sure that uh, you don't delay your uh, your hit ticks. So what I mean by that is I'm coming in for a hit. I'm going all the way out here. I have to go all the way back over here to hit them. Like you only have a certain amount of uh, dead game ticks. So just keep in mind, and this is only gonna come second nature the more you have uh, the time to practice and get used to the game ticks. So what I'm doing, I'm just running around, like I'm not missing a game tick at all. And this is very important. Well, see, I just missed one. See, I'm I'm a robot apparently, <laughs> not really. But um, anyway, so uh, that's the Slayer Staff. Now the RPG has a different uh, movement animation. You'll actually see that um, my character is sliding all around. I'm very slippery. I'm a slippery frog at the moment. And this is really cool because this is one of the only weapons in the game that acts like this property of, of a slippery, slidey, delayed, um, lacky movement. Um, you're gonna see that you'll be able to come at them from a very long distance and your opponent is gonna anticipate that you're nowhere close to them to be able to hit. So what this looks like if I'm switching from the RPG to the mall, you're gonna see something like this. Watch this. Boom. That wasn't really a good display, let's try it again. So we'll go, we'll be way out here. Well, let's try that again. <laughs> I'm not in the moment, guys. This is uh, this is something that um, I'm just gonna have to deal with. All right, so here we go. And so you just gotta click right before, right before you go in. So like right after you, you click on your opponent, you click on an unoccupied square. All right, so we'll do that, and then we'll go right in with the mall. And so you can just be very unpredictable with your movement and just run around, run through them. That's very important. And you can attack them with different weapons. Uh, so let's go with the standard fakie. For instance, I'm attacking with the RPG. 
So I'm going to be mainly attacking with the RPG and I'm going to switch to a different weapon such as the Slayer Staff or the Abi Maul to make sure that uh, my opponent does not know what's coming at them next. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to go right into the Abi Maul and I'm not going to miss a game tick. As soon as I hit, now the RPG is very hard to kind of get this rhythm down. So I recommend first starting out with like the Slayer Staff. So the Slayer Staff is going to look like this. And then you're going to have to switch back. See, I'm keeping the momentum up and I'm switching into something else. And that just makes sure that uh, I'm being very unpredictable and I'm messing up again. But it's all good. I'm not in a PvP situation right now, so I'm pretty relaxed. Um, but anyways, so these are just very standard uh, movement options. And whenever you configure them with your item switches, um, it really becomes a thing of beauty and something that you can... Um, always improve on no matter your skill level so this is why I w really wanted to cover this topic and this is really used with um, with melee PKing, not, not necessarily range PKing, because uh, range PKing is uh, morally focused on stacks whereas uh, there really isn't a chance for you to stack hits with melee so we have to rely on movement mind games and just being uh, really mindful and um, considerate of our actions and uh, really good eating. So that's all I really wanted to sh uh, say about this topic. Um, I really do thank my friend here for being the attack dummy. Um, if you have any more questions regarding uh, movement or item swapping or, um, or game ticks or anything, I'd be more than happy to address all of your individual concerns or questions down below in the comment section. So, and that goes with anything in this video too. If you've made it this far, please comment and, um, and ask me any of your questions and I'll address them when I get to them. All right, so let's move on to the next subject. All right, so now I'd like to take this time to really cover uh, some brief topics that don't really belong in one individual segment. So I just smushed all these categories in together uh, before we do one last overview of what I've covered in this video. So right now I really wanna focus on eating. Eating is something that everybody does. Um, so you'll watch in my PVP videos that I have currently on my YouTube page, I do a lot of unnecessary risks. And this is just because of my own comfort. Um, it's Sometimes it's very stupid, I would admit. It's very stupid to risk unnecessarily, but I believe it is a, a more challenging and fun way that I can express myself through PvP situations. I like being right on the skin of the teeth and right to just time everything right and everything line up. Now, uh, this build has a lot of accuracy problems. So none of this is all guaranteed. And there are plenty of times in which I die and make mistakes myself. So I just wanna just let you know that um, your eating habits will become more um, established the more you practice and the more you get out there and, um, and PVP yourself. Now, there are different people that consider um, what is known as safing as basically you're eating up to nearly your full amount of HP um, every single time and so people will call you out and say safing because they really want you to be at a uh, at a spot in your health where they can capitalize on that and potentially KO you so really just disregard if someone says safe it's just a common uh, PK term and you'll hear it a lot and it really doesn't matter because what I generally like to do is in the start of the fight I try to maintain a kind of high HP and that's why it's really important for Abi Maulers especially to have a really high HP level because uh, we can make sure that we can get our opponent down to the appropriate KO range before they can get us down to that range. And if they're using weaponry such as knives or, or um, other kind of range weapons that are really fast and really accurate. Um, that's just so easy for them to get us down to a uh, KO range where for obbies we have to actually work for it. So 
That's why we have the high HP to sort of circumvent all of the flaws of this build. So that's why I really, really, really do recommend that you choose a build for high HP. Although it's not necessary, to, people do like to uh, prod their accounts for other reasons, for uh, risk fighting, etc. These are more uh, skilled players that um, are aware of the risks of lower HP and that have PK'd like this for years. I definitely recommend you trying out a higher HP build if you're going and choosing Obby for the very first time. And you can always make um, more accounts as you get more skilled, but this is t typically uh, the type of account that gives you more leeway, a little bit more handicap, and allows you to explore uh, the PvP element of this game with an Obby Mauler. Uh, so secondly, I would like to tell you that obbies actually thrive in lower combat ranges simply because of the other builds that are that are accessible in this game, uh, such as high level range peers and uh, granite mauler accounts. All of these accounts get really, really strong really, really quickly, starting at around 50, 55 combat. So that is typically the sweet spot for an obby is... Uh, really high 40s or really low 50s and as, as long as you can maintain sort of that window um, you should have no problem at all learning how to obby pk for the very first time anything above like the mid 50s range you're going to start seeping into um very overpowered granite mauler brackets you're gonna experience uh, and have to deal with uh, people's high ranged and with high range comes um, an ungodly amount of accuracy from all the op range weapons in the game and sadly obby maulers cannot really use those that much um, we have very limited range xp so um, but those weapons really cut through one defense accounts and um, no matter what kind of gear you're wearing necessarily, um, people will hit with ranges. That is probably the most accurate attack style in the game. And if that's translatable to in a one defense account, well, it just goes to show how overpowered it is. And you're going to be seeing that and experiencing it full fledged. So uh, definitely keep your, uh, your combat level low into that sweet spot that I previously stated around the low... 50s even higher 40s but keep in mind that you might not see that much activity in those sort of brackets themselves especially with the last few months and the way pvp has been going now i know i've recently updated uh some uh bh pking videos but that is uh, a thing of the past now uh, we have to rely on pvp worlds and like i said with the state of pvp uh, with builds 15 levels higher can attack you um, Yeah, that creates more of a necessity for high HP and for um, To stay a lower combat bracket. So it means so much more now than it ever did before So that's going to conclude this segment now The final segment I have is going to be an overview of everything that we've established previously in this video And I have a very special clip to share with you. So stay tuned all right, viewers, you have made it to the finale, and I just wanted to thank you guys so much for making it this far. Uh, in this clip, you're going to witness two very skilled obby maulers duke it out. Um, this clip just shows the uh, pinnacle of obby mauler content uh, with PvP, so I'm going to show you exactly what I am going to do here. So I'm already potted and anglered as I engage the fight. And I'm using the Slayer Staff to kind of uh, whittle him down. And he's already at 61, so we're going to be switching right into the Obby Mall and try to get that him down to an awkward HP level. Now, you can see the usage of these fun weapons. We're going to go over those in another video again. But these are to uh, stall the animations and sort of hide these weapons that I'm currently using to make my switch is more discreet and you can see both of us are just uh, a master of movement running around switching weapons he's one ticking his maul right there he's getting really lucky with his um with his attacks and strikes and he's using a slayer bell of his own for the fun weapon of his choice and we're doing really well i mean uh just a ton of hits and we're both eating at the same uh, a really good time both risking it for each other um, I'm trying not to let my HP get below his max hit, which is, I believe, a 45 as well. So, uh, but there's still a chance that, 
uh, one of us could mess up and uh, juke each other out. So um, that's typically, oh, and there we go with the juke, baby. We just killed a, another obby. So that is wonderful. I guess I juked him out with my movement there and um, we are looting. Unfortunately, he did end up losing his skull. Um, but yeah, that is just a perfect demonstration of what to expect in a Obby Mahler PvP mirror match. So that is all the content I have to share with you in this video, boys, but please be sure to check out my other guides, PvP, and progress videos posted on my channel. If you've made it to the end, freaking congratulations, and I seriously honor your continued support for this channel. You can review specific sections using the timestamps down below. And I hope you can take bits and pieces of the information that I've given you and you can use them for your own enjoyment and fulfillment for your Abby Mahler account because it is all about the fun. So make sure to leave a comment down below, subscribe for more content, and as always, Abby Mahler that like button. Until next time, peace.